Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner, Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be deviating from my normal line of electronics videos to talk a little bit about physics. Now, I'm in Physics C in my senior year of high school, and for our final week to make a video uh, regarding physics. And so I'm going to be talking about kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, work, and a few other things. Now, I'll be demonstrating some of these physics concepts and ideas by rolling my car down a hill. Now, you can take the potential energy of gravity and use that formula and set it equal to the kinetic energy of the car at the bottom of the hill, and we can use that to approximate the velocity that the car will be going at the bottom of the hill. Then I can use the speedometer of the car to find the actual velocity is traveled. Now these velocities aren't going to be the same, so I'll explain why that is using the law of conservation of energy. Let's get started. Let's go get in the car. Alright, so according to this GPS uh, reading from my phone, we are approximately at an altitude of 473 meters. Um, so we need to remember that because that's the height at the bottom of the hill. And we are going zero meters per second. So now we're going to drive up to the top of the hill and record the altitude again. Let's go. Alright, so we're at the top of the hill now. Let's take a look at that. So it was at 473 meters before. Now we are at 521 meters. That is a pretty significant change in uh, the height. All right, so let's roll down the hill. I will set this phone to record uh, the data of the GPS and we'll roll down the hill, see what speed we get to at the bottom and it'll be cool. Let's roll. Gonna break a new land speed record. All right, the fun is over. It's time to get some math done. Now, kinetic energy is uh, the energy an object has as it's moving. Now, when my truck was driving down the hill, it had kinetic energy. Now, the formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared, where m is measured in kilograms and v is measured in meters per second. We also have another formula for potential energy. Potential energy is how many uh, joules of energy an object has at a certain position in height relative to another position, and that is mass times gravity times height. Gravity is an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared, and height is measured in meters, and mass is again measured in kilograms. Now, both of these energies should be equal to each other, because let's say we have the hill, and we have my car on top of the hill, and we have this car, and it has a potential energy based on the height relative to the height it'll be at the lowest point. Now, after this car moves down the hill, all that potential energy should be converted to kinetic energy when it moves down the hill. So if we combine these two equations together, we can see that one half mv squared is equal to mgh. And since there's an m on both sides, we can cancel that out because that is not needed right now. So we have one half v squared equals gh. Now remember when we were at the bottom of the hill and at the top of the hill, the bottom we were at 470 meters, the top we were at 513 meters. The complete difference between these two numbers is going to be 43 meters. So that is the height the car was relative from its highest point to its absolute lowest point. And so for this equation, we're going to set one half equal to itself. V squared is just a constant we don't know yet. G is 9.81 and H is 43 meters. So we can calculate the velocity that my truck should have been going. All right, so now with all these calculations done, we see that my car should have been traveling at a velocity of 29.04 meters per second when it hit the bottom of the hill. But in reality, the car was actually traveling 20 meters per second. 
Now that is a very big um, disparity in the velocities. That means the car was actually going 33% slower than it should have been. Now you may be looking at my results and think that I've messed up somewhere in my calculations, but I actually didn't mess up anywhere. You may also think that some energy got destroyed somehow, but this is not the case. Nothing can break the laws of the universe that say energy cannot be created or destroyed. Yes, not even all those fake perpetual motion machines you see on YouTube. Well, anyway, some of that energy is lost to other sources. Like when the wheels start spinning, it takes energy to uh, speed up those wheels uh, and make them start spinning. That's rotational inertia. Energy is also lost through air resistance as the car has to plow through this liquid of air around it. And that slows it down and makes it not go as fast. So energy is never actually lost. And it's just converted to other forms. Now let's go ahead and use these uh, potential energy and kinetic energy equations to find the kinetic energy of the car at the bottom of the hill. And so we know that the car uh, is a mass of approximately uh, 1,360 kilograms. We know the velocity was 20 meters per second. It's actually 20.1 meters per second. And that is squared. So if we calculate this, so if we calculate this, we get that the car had a kinetic energy of approximately 27,000 uh, joules. That is a lot of energy. Now, work is the change in kinetic energy. So we know that it started with a kinetic energy of zero because the velocity was zero, and it went to 2700. So we know that the work that was done on the truck by gravity was approximately 27,000 joules, and that's pretty cool. Now let's look into another aspect of work. Now work is the integral of force. So the hill I was driving on kind of looked like this. It started out pretty steep, and then it leveled out a little bit, and then went steep again. Now because of gravity's constant force being downwards, when the truck was at different points in the hill, due to the level of the hill relative to ground, um, the force on my car changed. And now this change in force can be represented by a graph that looks something like this. For instance, if we had this as time equals one, uh, zero, and we had this as time equals 10, we can see that the force at time zero is different than the force at time equals 10 and throughout this whole thing. And so throughout the driving down the hill of my truck, the forces changed a lot and we can use this integral to find the area under the curve and that gives us the work done on this system. And that is the change in kinetic energy too. So that was a pretty cool video about physics. Hopefully you guys learned something. Now, I'll be uploading some more electronics videos in the future, uh, probably maybe in the next week. Now, the only reason I haven't been uploading many videos recently is because I'm pretty busy with school and stuff. As always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for my next video, which is bound to be awesome.